meeting. We have a quorum, so I would ask Mr. Brenton Dean from Maplewood to come up and lead us in the pledge. Chop, chop, sir. <laughs> Colleagues, I would move that we accept this agenda as printed. Do we have any exceptions or special requests? Seeing none, we'll begin with the good news is, thank you, Overton High School Band. So I am so proud of Overton's uh, brass band being here. My, my dad, frankly, would have used it as a, I told you so, as he always wanted me to play the French horn and I went woodwind. So um, <laughs> he'll be so happy to see that. So they uh, beautifully performed Rondo by Marcella Favon, Favino and Coral from Jupiter by Holst and arranged by Adam Bowl. Thank you. This month's artwork is a selection of pieces from Hume Fogg Magnet High School. The works include paintings, a collage, and prints. The large black and white print of Dirty Dishes is titled Sink and recently won a Gold Key Award at the Regional Scholastic Art Awards. Shana Snyder is the art teacher at Hume Fogg. Thank you so much for all you do. Please enjoy the art. Now we'll jump in some, to some awards and recognition. We have the Academies of Nashville Students of the Year. Good evening. The Academies of Nashville provide students in all of our zone high schools with one of the best college and career prep programs in the nation. Students have a choice of 39 different academies within 12 high schools offering practical, hands-on approach to learning in fields that interest them ranging from engineering to healthcare. Tonight, we will be honoring one senior from each high school as the Academies of Nashville Student of the Year. I would like to ask Donna Gilley and Brian Brewer to the podium for the recognitions. Good evening, Dr. Battle and members of the board. Thank you so much for having us this evening and thank you for those of you that were able to get over to the reception. It is a very special evening to celebrate 12 of our students and uh, Brian and I did rock, paper, scissors and I think I let him move a few less tables or I think it's a few fewer tables than I did and so I get to hug and he gets to call the names. So I'm going to turn it over to Brian and let him call the names and we'll recognize these young people. Thank you very much. So, One more thing I forgot to add. We have wonderful partners here that are helping. Uh, each of our students will receive uh, a medal from our department, but they'll also be receiving a trophy from the Chamber of Commerce and a backpack filled with goodies and uh, school supplies from Deloitte. And I want to thank our partners, John and Susan and Scott, for being here tonight. So good evening, everyone. Uh, students, as I call your name, please come up and stand uh, in a row here and remain standing until we're done. I would appreciate it. So let's see here. So our first group is from our uh, Southeast Quadrant. That's gonna be uh, Marcelaney Beltran from Manioc High School. We have Simone Shannon from Cane Ridge High School. And we have Alfonso Jones from Glencliff High School. Our Southwest Quadrant, we have Kaylee Williams from Hillsborough High School. Applause 
We have Dakota Villers from Hillwood High School. And we have Adams Diamande from John Overton High School. <laughs> From our Northeast Quadrant, we have David Nikiza from Maplewood High School. We have Hayden Clark from Stratford High School. And we have Barrett Bays from McGavick High School. And then from our Northwest Quadrant, we have Anthony Lindsley from Pearl Cone High School. We have Zashay Simmons from Hunters Lane High School. And we have Dominique Rodriguez from Whites Creek High School. Students, students, if you all could step back here behind the partition. So if you'll go in right there. Good-looking group. Good job. Most of them are leaving. If we could give them one more round of applause. Congratulations.
there are so many wonderful things happening around MNPS. We have another award to offer tonight or to commemorate. This is the prestigious Milken Educator Award. This award is mm, is going to be discussed by Dr. Battle, our director of schools. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Bugs. We do have a lot of great things happening. Um, each year, the Milken Family Foundation honors top educators around the country. The Milken Educator Awards have grown to be the largest teacher recognition program with over 2,700 talented educators proudly bearing the prestigious designation of Milken Educator. The purpose and goals for this program are to honor and reward outstanding educators for the quality of their teaching, their professional leadership, their engagement with families and community, and their potential for even greater contribution to the healthy development of children and to focus public attention on the importance of excellent educators. Last October, there was a surprise event at East End Prep for Ms. Shelley Gaughan, where she was announced as one of the two Tennessee Milken Award winners for educators for the 2018-19 school year. At this time, I would like to introduce Michelle Mills, Director of Talent and Professional Learning from the Tennessee Department of Educating, who is here to formally present the award to Ms. Shelley Gaughan of East End Prep. Uh, thank you, Dr. Battle. I just, before I um, ask Shelly to come up, want to share a little bit more about her and her outstanding, the outstanding work that she does with students in the classroom. Um, but we first want to acknowledge that this is not an accolade or as a lifetime achievement award. This award is really presented to educators who have just such a strong, promising future and potential to continue to impact education for many, many years to come. And we certainly see that in, in Shelly. Um, as you said, last October she was awarded in a surprise event, this award. Um, but Shelly is a kindergarten teacher at Easton Prep. She teaches the whole child, despite, and despite their age, holds them to high expectations, both for academics and social emotional behavior and growth. Shelly's students are remarkably independent. I personally had the pleasure to uh, visit her classroom and see them in action, and they have learned to move from one activity to another with very little adult support. Um, they are highly self-directed and highly self-motivated. Additionally, they provide feedback to their peers on both work and behavior. Her methods deliver stellar results. Her students show 90th percentile growth on uh, both math and reading assessments year after year. Ms. Gaughan's impact goes well beyond the classroom. She has become an integral part of East End Prep, and she leads the school's art club, kindergarten orientation, and she's even founded a volunteer corps for kindergartners, first and second graders, to show them that no matter what their age, or how much money they have, they still can provide an impact and make a difference. So while she was surprised uh, at this event in October, we would now like to formally recognize her in the presence of her friends and family. On behalf of Commissioner Penny Schwinn and the Milken Family Foundation, I present the 2018 Milken Educator Award to Ms. Shelley Gaughan. Mrs. Gone, would you come back up for a picture?
congratulations again. Now we will move into public participation where the board will hear from those persons who have requested to appear at this board meeting. In the interest of time, speakers are requested to limit your remarks to three minutes or less. Comments will be timed. If you'll direct your eyes to the screen in just a moment, you'll see the order in which you'll be presenting to us. We'll begin with Kyra Thomas, followed by Skylar Ringer, Ringler, Clarissa Williams, Evan Russellberg, and Matt Progno. Pregno. Um, hi there. Uh, good evening, Chair, members of the board, and um, Dr. Battle. My name is Kira Thomas, um, and my address is 1547 Hudson Road in Madison. Um, so I am a student at Stratford STEM uh, Magnet High School, and I'm here to talk to you guys uh, today um, about a new policy that's being implemented in regards to our grades as uh, students in ingenuity classes. Um, so for those of you who don't know the full story, let me begin by presenting you that. Um, so. Essentially what happened was that we at Stratford didn't have a math teacher and so we ended up hiring one uh, about three weeks into the school year who then quit on us um, about two weeks into the school year and so they had to give us something um, for those higher level math classes and physics classes that we didn't have a teacher for. Um, and so they decided that we would do ingenuity courses um, but didn't necessarily decide that until about October. Um, so when we finally got into the course we were already behind. Um, and had months of work to make up. Um, and then they didn't tell us that there was a semester B or a second half of the course until about March. Um, and so essentially from the beginning we were told that the way that they would be grading us was that um, they would grade us based on our progress in the course. And so uh, students such as myself focused more on progressing through the work rather than progressing through the work and keeping the grade up. Um, and about, uh, you know, 12 days before the school year is over, they've decided to change the grading policy to base it completely 100% on mastery. Um, and so the grade that is sitting in Ingenuity right now will become the grade that sits um, on our report card. Um, and there's a couple issues with that. Um, the first and major issue being that basing the grade 100% off of mastery um, it disregards all of the circumstances that uh, the students had that were out of their control that were holding them back. Um, so essentially the fact that ingenuity um, and the courses we were taking are harder level, higher math courses, so like pre-cal and statistics. Um, and so we were put into ingenuity classes, which is a virtual class. Um, so hard concepts, virtual class, and lack of a teacher in the classroom to help us work through these um, concepts. And we were on a time crunch, so we had about four months of work to do in about two months of work. And so to take a grade and disregard any of the effort that the student, you know, all of these stresses and circumstances that are out of the student's control, um, to not factor that into the grade calculation, um, I feel like is a little unfair, especially 12 days before the semester is over to the point where it's students like myself and others, um, our courses are closed and there's nothing we can do about it. Um, um, so thank you for your time. Thank you. Next, Skylar Ring Ringler. Uh, hello, Chair, members of the board, and Dr. Battle. My name is Skylar Ringler, and I live at 2508 McGinnis Drive in Nashville, Tennessee. I am also a student at Stratford STEM Magnet, and I am also here to discuss ingenuity. As Kira ta uh, said, uh, the situation that we have now is that the grades that we have in ingenuity will become our grades on our transcripts, and this, she discussed the problems related to that. And personally, if the grades that were from ingenuity were transferred over to my transcripts, that puts my position as the future valedictorian in jeopardy. Obviously, I understand that some of the responsibility does lie on the students, but uh, as she said, there are a lot of stressors that placing the grade fully on mastery just don't uh, account for. And of course, mastery should be part of the grade because if we don't account for that, then it's not really uh, it's not really talking about what's important. It's not helping the students learn anything. It's just, oh, you tried, which is not what education is about. But 
because of the circumstances, I feel that it's kind of necessary to include effort in as part of the grade because there's just so much that made this so difficult. And even though there was a tutor there, he was not there frequently. He was only there for <laughs> two hours once a week, which was great. And it was amazing that we had him, but that wasn't exactly the support that we needed within Edgenuity. And we didn't get the support that we needed until this month, whenever they brought uh, a teacher, the teacher and who will be teaching next year. She was actually, she's subbing for us now. And she has helped, but it's a little late in the year for that. And personally, I have completed all of the Edgenuity courses, so they are now closed to me. And the only way that I can go back and improve these grades is to ask her to reopen them, and she can't reopen the first semester. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Clarissa Williams. Good evening, Chair members and Dr. Battle. My name is Clarissa Williams, and my address is 2230 Ravenwood Drive in Nashville. And I'm also here to address the ingenuity for my daughter. And uh, she's a junior at Stratford High School and is, of course, one of the many students that have been affected by this. At the beginning of the school year, the students were enrolled in the pre-cal, the AP physics, and statistics found themselves without the teacher when the instructor re resigned and announced. The school system could not have anticipated this, but it is not the responsibility of our students to teach themselves, but rather it is the Board of Education's duty to provide adequate staff and education to our youth. Despite numerous attempts through the school year and efforts to work with the executive principal, he was unsuccessful in finding certified teachers with the adequate education and knowledge to teach these high-level courses. The original intention was for ingenuity was to be used for recovery credit to assist the students to make up the credits in order to graduate. However, when the school found itself without a teacher, it was decided that we would use this as an actual credit class. To me, this was ill-advised and it left avoiding the education being offered to our students. There was not an instructor available to oversee these classes and so there was no guidance with class materials. We know the Ingenuity is a virtual system where incomplete assignments are factored into the final grade. Our students are behind in these assignments, which is a direct result of them not having a teacher. And to me, it's not acceptable that our children should receive an education of less than quality that are being held accountable with poor academic scores. The negativity is affecting their learning, their future potential as colleges and scholarships will review their academic records. The purpose of my daughter enrolling in the AP Physics was to give her a solid foundation to build her future college and career goals. We monitored her grades, believing she was passing. However, as of May the 9th, 2019, she was informed that the grades will come directly from Genuity, having no curve or adjustments made in the system to reflect the real-time work accomplished by these students. That has now placed many students in jeopardy of failing. My daughter's always been on the honor row and now fears her outcome will be failure, regardless of hard work and scores. She's always obtained on which she completed her work without the help of a teacher. This has disappointed her greatly, and the frustration has dampened her enthusiasm for learning, resulting in a low self-esteem, which is unfair to students and which has affected them in a negative way. As taxpayers, we expect our tax dollars to contribute to the education of our children. After all, they are our future, and this is your job. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Evan Russellberg, pleasure to see you again. <coughs> Pleasure to see you too. Good evening, Chair Members of the Board and Dr. Battle. My name is Evan Russellberg, and I'm a junior at Stratford High School. My address is 620 South 14th Street, Nashville, Tennessee, 37206. I am also here today concerning the Edgenuity program at Stratford High School. Ever since our math teacher left us for better job opportunity in late August, early September, we have been put on a program known as Edgenuity. We were told that as long as we tried and did the work, we were to get 93s. So we did that. Time went on, and we were told that we were behind, so we were told to finish the program as fast as we could. So we did that. Then our grades got lower, and we were then given a contract that stated if we did three quizzes a week, we'd get an A. 
Two quizzes a week, we'd get a B, and so on. Being concerned, I went to a principal of mine. She proceeded to tell me that as long as I paced myself and tried to learn something, that I would get a good grade. I sacrificed my peer tutoring class and came to the class to do the work and get assistance. I started to do a little better, but the teacher helped me could only do so much. Then about a week, we were to all told that to finish the program, but finish with passing grades, and that would be our final grade. We have come to find out that this decision was made by you, the board. We were never accommodated for the situation we had control over, no control over. And now many of us are to suffer, including our seniors who may not graduate until July because of this agenutic program. This situation is both unfair, un unattainable, and downright unreasonable. This situation has caused many students to turn to a website known as Brainly, which is designed to give the answers to the Edgenuity program, so kind of cheating. I am not a part of that. I am here today to ask the board to do the right thing. Give us the grades that we deserve for suffering of a situation that we had no control over and accommodate us for our misfortune. We have already paid for this mess because our ACT scores in math have already found to be low, and we may never know the math that we were supposed to learn this year. Do the right thing, give us a fair and reasonable grade so we can move on from this horrendous situation. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening, Chairwoman, members of the board, Dr. Battle. My name is Matt Pregant. My address is 315 Hancock Street in East Nashville. Um, I will put a bookend to the Stratford story. Uh, students, well done. Last night, I met with a group of students and parents um, from Stratford High School um, whom this, the district has failed. To put it mildly, we are mad. We have 150 students about impacted by this decision to use edgenuity instead of hiring teachers. This includes about 15 students whose graduation, college academic scholarships and athletic scholarships are at risk and in a few weeks in the last few weeks because of negligence to monitor the situation. For example, after losing one of our senior math teachers, which you've heard, um, they lost them to a charter school, um, the district offered online education using ingenuity. And this was physics, statistics, and pre-calc were the three classes. Those are high-level classes. We all know that. These are high-achieving students who want to exceed in the college atmosphere. These are not students who are, who are slacking at all. Um, the Ingenuity software platform has a user rating of a one star out of five from the National Science Foundation review site, yet we're using this. As the school scrambled to deal with the teachers leaving, the students were made to sign a written contract, a contract, setting expectations to complete the program, as you've heard, three quizzes a week, only to have those expectations changed last week. But even worse, they're encouraged to complete the work just to clear the quizzes, regardless of whether they were learning the material. Tutors were offered, but not often available, and not often able to teach the material itself. I know AP, there's an AP uh, English class where the tutor was during, the, he was there, but most of the students were in AP English, because they're taking AP classes. These students were gaining zero mastery. This is a complete failure. The failure is negligence that opens the district to legal action. Let me say that again. We think this district you all preside over is being negligent, and we want it resolved now. The students were given wrong expectations on how to complete the class. The platform does not teach. And now, at the end of the year, administrators are scrambling to cover up a disaster, even accusing our kids of being lazy. When you all in the district agreed to use an app instead of a teacher, you were selling our children's interests to private interests. Somebody's making money on this. And these students are the best of the best, as I've said before. They're the ones taking challenging classes and holding themselves high to high expectation. Their level of motivation is not the problem. That's not a valid argument. MNPS failed these students on the cusp of graduation and many more having their junior year disrupted. And as we heard, their GPA permanently damaged. And these students are handling it really well. There's, I mean, we've heard from parents, panic attacks, stress from these students who all year 
thought they were doing what they were supposed to do. We need immediate action, please. This is an emergency. We need proper administration in this situation right now. The administrations and teachers at Stratford are not on top of this. This district needs to intervene now, please. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Seeing no more participants listed, thank you all for presenting to us. Um, we'll move into governance actions with the consent agenda. Uh, Mrs. Frog, would you mind reading the consent agenda? Thank you. Sure. 1A, approval of minutes, 4-9-2019 and 4-7-2019 meetings. 1B, recommended award of contract for portable moving Carlos Lewis and Sons house movers. C, recommended approval of change order number one for New Hillwood High School Messer Construction Company. D, recommended approval of change order number four for Tusculum Elementary School Additions R.G. Anderson Company. E, recommended approval of request number five for small scope projects at various schools, Pennington Elementary School Sinkhole Repair, Bomar Construction Company. F, recommended approval of request number one for large scope projects at various schools, Robert E. Lillard Elementary School, Stormwater Drain, Drainage Improvements, Orion Building Corporation. G, recommended award of contract for fire, fire alarm upgrades at Harris Hillman School, Facility Services Management Incorporated. H, recommended award of contract for fire alarm replacement at Avanetta H. Davis Early Learning Center, Beacon Technologies Incorporated. I, recommended award of contract for fire alarm upgrades at Nashville Academy of Computer Science, Old Brick Church School Building. Facility Man Services Management Incorporated. J, recommended award of contract for fire alarm replacement at Nashville Prep, McCann School Building, Facility Services Management. K, recommended award of contract for chiller cooling tower replacement at Whites Creek High School, Advanced Mechanical Contractors Incorporated. Recommend, uh, I, L, recommended award of contract for fire alarm replacement at Amqui Elementary School, ADT LLC. M, recommended award of contract for fire alarm replacement at Glengarry Elementary School, ADT LLC. N, recommended award of contract for boiler and pump replacement at Glencliff Elementary School, Williams Mechanical LLC. O, recommended award of contract for boiler and pump replacement at Paragon Mills Elementary School, Southern Heating and Cooling. P, recommended award of contract for boiler and pump replacement at Administration Building, Williams Mechanical, LLC. Q, recommended approval of request number one for district-wide asphalt improvements, DuPont Elementary School parking lot expansion, Carver Construction Company, LLC. R, awarding of purchases and contracts. R1, Apple Incorporated, R2, in Attainment Company Incorporated, R3, Barnes & Noble Booksellers, R4, BSE, Harris Electric, R5, CDW-G, R6, Cumberland Heights, R7, Cumberland International, R8, Dell Marketing LP, two contracts, R9, Hermitage Hall, R10, Jarrett Builders Incorporated, R11, Math Teachers Press Incorporated, R12, Mid-Tennessee uh, Ford Truck Sales Incorporated. R13, Northwest Evaluation Association, NWEA. R14, Oasis Center. R15, Personal Computer Systems Incorporated. R16, Stars Nashville. R17, TrueCore Behavioral Solutions, LLC. R18, Youth Opportunity Investments, LLC. R19, Youth Villages. And our, hmm, I believe this is supposed to be S, Davidson County CTE Local Perkins Plan. And, oh, the legal and T, Legal Settlement Claim AH 06853 for $100,000. All right, the consent agenda has been presented. Do we have a motion to accept it? I move that we accept the consent agenda as read. Second. Any discussion? 
All right, all in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, it's unanimous. All right, we'll move on to Dotson Tulip Grove Elementary Zoning. Good evening, uh, Dr. Battle and board members. Um, this is a kind of a unique rezoning situation. And I'm just gonna go over the highlights. You have a rezoning packet in front of you. And uh, we were kind of aware that this new development was coming on uh, sometime in the early fall, and so we started looking at what to do. Uh, we are looking at, if you flip on page two, there is a map, and we've labeled the area 1A. And 1A is largely, or is entirely, Hermitage Flats, which is a new 267-unit apartment complex that opened a couple of weeks ago and is starting to fill up. And Dodson Elementary School is projected to be at 100% of capacity next year, and we still anticipate them to continue to grow. So this move is to put that development into an adjacent uh, school, Tulip Grove, which is only operating at about 66% capacity and is not projected to grow over the next five years. And the two schools are fairly close together. They're less than a mile apart. So we thought if we could kind of do the rezoning now before the development was fully uh, open, that would minimize impact on our students and families. And so that's why we're bringing it to you now. Um, and there's really not a whole lot else to it. The development, we think, can add about 38 to 53 kids to Dodson Elementary. So this is why we're proposing to put them into Tulip Grove and it should help stabilize enrollment at Dodson over the next few years, and Tulip Grove has plenty of space for the additional students. And uh, we are asking that we do grandfathering for the, there's a handful of kids that have moved in there since it's open, and so we would offer grandfathering to the highest two grades, so third and fourth graders or current second and third grade students. And uh, that's really all I have. It's a fairly unique rezoning. There wasn't a community open when we started going through it. So we just met with the principals, the community superintendent, the EDSSI, and I went out to the apartment complex and visited with the management and let them know what we were trying to do and talk to them about it. And if you guys have any questions, be happy to take them. What would this put Tulip Grove at capacity-wise? these additional 38 to 40 students? It would put them at a projected 479 and the capacity for the building is 733. Oh, okay. And I should add that it does not impact uh, middle school or high school feeders, so it's only an elementary change. Any questions before we vote? Just in, um, in transparency, um, Brian and I have had several conversations about this because we knew that this was coming, this large development is on Old Hickory Boulevard. It's going to hugely impact the traffic there, which is already wicked. And um, so it's, it's um, I'm going to say, I'm going to call it affordable housing. They have some strict guidelines as to who can apply, uh, the, what the... Um, income guidelines are and so it should be a good development so um, when we were talking about this initially I was in support of changing those um, the the uh, rezoning because I wanted to keep Dodson from they're already on the one year capital needs plan for five new classrooms is that right that that's correct they're in year two right now for a four classroom addition appreciate you work on that uh, the department, the apartment complex is very nice. It looks very nice inside, and it's a mix of one, two, and three bedroom units. All right, do we have a motion? Move that we accept the uh, rezoning plan for Dodson and, and um, Tulip Grove as second. presented. Mm -hmm. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, now we'll have brief discuss or have discussion on the 2019-2020 operating budget. Can I start that off? Sure. Okay. Um, so we passed this budget that we're going to speak about um, on uh, April the 9th with a majority vote. We have already presented this budget to the mayor. 
Thursday, this coming Thursday, we present it to Metro Council at 4.30 in Council Chambers. And so I, I thought that this would be the last opportunity that we have to ask additional questions, make additional comments, or um, whatever it is we need to do before we go before the Council on Thursday. Okay, so at this time, I'd like to invite our Chief Operating Officer, Chris Henson, to the podium to explain our proposal. Thank you, Dr. Battle and Ms. Shepard. And as Ms. Shepard indicated, um, this is the only board meeting that we have uh, between when the mayor uh, made his recommended funding uh, allocation to the council and our budget hearing with the Metro Council, which as Ms. Shepard indicated is Thursday evening at 4.30, beginning at 4.30. And so I thought what we would do is to uh, go back over what the board approved since it's uh, been uh, a few weeks to make sure that everyone understands uh, what the board did approve on, back on April 9th. Uh, that included a 10% across the board raise for all employees plus a step increase for all of our employees. It also included some required additional costs that we have uh, regardless, which would include our existing pre-K program where the federal grant will end mid-year. It also includes the additional personnel and resources that we need as we um, convert to Metro government's new Oracle R12 product for payroll, HR, finance, purchasing, et cetera. It also includes approximately $9 million uh, in addition for uh, charter school enrollment increases as well as an increase in the per pupil amount uh, as calculated by the State Department of Education for our charter schools. It includes inflationary increases and other required expenditures for things such as uh, contract, uh, automatic contract increases as well as utility rate increases. We also included uh, other proposed changes uh, in, uh, that were included in the board's proposal, uh, which uh, I'm going to go ahead and just read them off. Um, the board uh, had discussions about a, me a memorandum of understanding with the Metro Office of Internal Audit to provide two full-time auditors on site here that would re report to the Metro Office of Internal Audit the estimated cost of $230,000. Three additional human resources positions, that would be two talent acquisition partners, which are basically teacher recruiters, as well as an additional, as well as a, an employee relations manager to help with the backlog of employee investigations. Four additional IT personnel, uh, just based upon uh, some of the board's uh, stated budget uh, priorities, which included HR and IT infrastructure. Uh, additional dollars for textbooks, approximately $2.7 in additional dollars for textbooks. Adding four days to the work calendar for our parapros at approximately $850,000. The individual learning plan software for our English learners at a, a co estimated cost of $350,000. Adding four additional teaching positions as we add an additional grade to our early college program. Adding additional uh, supports for social emotional learning, as well as adding 12 care centers at uh, our, our 12 highest need elementary schools. Adding two additional Spanish translators, as well as a translator scheduler at a cost of $227,000 and then an additional dollar per hour for our bus drivers and bus monitors, as well as increasing the attendance bonus for bus drivers and instituting an attendance bonus for our bus monitors. These all uh, were around the board's stated uh, budget priorities that were discussed on several occasions in board retreats, uh, where the top priority of the board, top budget priority of the board was employee compensation. Uh, the other areas of priority would include instructional materials and supplies, which uh, would obviously include textbooks, social emotional learning supports, uh, family engagement, and continuing uh, to support our existing pre-K program. And so this budget that the board approved back on April 9th encompassed all of those, dis all of those board budget priorities. It had a total uh, increase of approximately $76.6 .6 million, uh, which was an 8.6% increase over the current year budget. And so 
that is the, uh, in a nutshell, uh, the a summary of what the board approved back on April 9th, um, and just wanted to make sure that that was stated in public again, and that uh, uh, everyone understood uh, this is the this is the budget that the board of education has approved, and so. Uh, any questions on that or any comments or discussions on the document that uh, the board approved on April 9th? So then uh, we did receive our recommended funding allocation uh, from the mayor uh, through the Metro Finance Director, which was an additional $28.2 million, which is a 3.2% increase. The overall Metro government budget is increasing by 4.55%. Uh, the recommended funding uh, increase for Metro schools, as I said, is 3.2%. Uh, there was the expressed uh, desire uh, for the board to uh, allot some of that money, if not all of it, to a 3% raise for all employees. Uh, and so I did want to go through what that might look like uh, if that were the amount that we were to receive. Uh, if you remember, each 1% raise costs approximately $5 million, and so if we were to give a 3% raise to all employees, that's about $15.1 million. Uh, we do take into consideration uh, estimated cost savings for vacancies and turnover that occur during the fiscal year, during the school year, and we're estimating that at a $3 million savings. So we're looking at approximately um, if you take the 15 million and you reduce the, the 3 million, we're at about $12 million net. We have those uh, required additional costs that I mentioned earlier, uh, the inflationary increases, the um, Metro government Oracle R12 conversion costs, the existing pre-K program for half a year uh, as the federal grant sunsets, the additional costs for addition, uh, increased charter school enrollment and the increase in the per pupil rate, rate uh, there. Included in the uh, letter that we received from the Metro Finance Department indicated that we would have a, an approximate $2.7 million increase in our what's called property tax refund or MDHA tax increment funding. And so that amount would be increased by $2.7 million. So if you add that into our required additions, we are at about $16.8 million that we would be adding to the uh, approximately uh, $12 million on the net employee compensation. And so those two together are going to equate to uh, approximately $28.8 million. We did have some savings in our certificated insurance and certificated pension of approximately $700,000. And so in the end, uh, if we were to, to give a 3% raise with the required additions that we have, with the additional $2.7 million increase in the property tax refund, the uh, tax incremental financing uh, amount that is charged back to the district, uh, that would take into consideration all of the additional $28.2 million that has been proposed and recommended by the mayor uh, for us. And so that's just in a nutshell what those numbers might look like, and I'm happy to try to answer any questions that you may have regarding that scenario. Mr. Henson, when we had our conference call or our meeting yesterday um, to prepare for the meeting on Thursday, you went into great into detail about what the raise structure looks like for um, our Metro employees. And if I remember correctly, it was 3%, but it was also um, a step increase and a 2%, and I'm not going to remember the terminology for that. Sure, and I'll just go by what, I, okay. what I've read um, and, and heard. Uh, the, the proposal, from what I understand, for Metro government employees that are on the pay plan would be a 3% increase plus a step increase, as you mentioned, uh, plus something that's called a 2% a, a open range increase, which I think is based upon evaluations and, and, and merit pay. And then also uh, that no Metro government employee would make less than $15 per hour. And so... Um, the proposal that we received with the, the narrative in the letter was just the 3% increase. Uh, we would not have enough funding to give a step increase, which uh, that cost is an additional $8 million. And then uh, it would not include the additional funding we would need to bring all of our employ hourly employees up to a minimum of $15 per hour. And I'm sorry, but uh, 
in our agenda planning meeting, I think we got our, our, our wires crossed. Uh, we would like to have the document to show, to lay out, to show all the council members what exactly every, I mean, that every 1% is $5 million, what our inflationary costs are, just everything you listed so that we can show them, you know, if this is all we receive, we won't have social emotional learning supports, we won't be able to replace the pre-K grant, we won't, you know, just being able to show them very clearly and the community at large whose eyes probably crossed while you were uh, saying some of these numbers, but if we could have a document that lays all that out that we can share with the community and share with the council members, that would, I would be uh, very appreciative. Appreciative. And, and I've got, in anticipation of that, I've got something that I'll just hand out now. That would be great. So that we can kind of go through this together. Madam Chair. And then uh, Rachel Ann and then uh, Mr. Pinkston. So my question, and I don't know if you have this off the top of your head, is how much would it cost to get everybody to $15 an hour? I don't have that information. That would need to be calculated by human resources, and I don't know if Dr. Majors has calculated what that would look like. Mr. Pinkston. Does everyone have a copy? First of all, does everyone have a copy of what I distributed? Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> you know, I watched with interest um, the uh, state legislature uh, a few weeks, a couple of weeks ago, as they were debating the uh, the voucher program that is uh, an effort to devastate the the budget of uh, the bu the budget of international public schools as well as Shelby County schools. And I watched um, them fumble all over themselves trying to explain what the ultimate cost would be, and the legislature. Uh, several of them said, uh, oh, well, it's subject to appropriations, subject to appropriations. We're not sure. Maybe the money will be there. Maybe it won't. It'll be subject to appropriations. So I think um, it's time for us to use their own language and say some of this is going to be subject to appropriations. So whenever we get to the other side of the conversation with the council, whatever number they ultimately approve for us, whether it's 28 million or 30 million or 32 million, uh, I want to bring notice now that I want to redirect the 9 million that's currently set for charter schools to redirect that to uh, employee pay raises. Um, that'll get almost 2% um, on top of whatever's being contemplated. So that's a, a notice uh, to bring a uh, motion at a future meeting after the council uh, determines what our ultimate uh, uh, additional funding is going to be. Because just like the legislature, we're subject to appropriations. Okay. Other questions or comments? I'm happy to walk you through this document since I was verbally giving it, just sure. to, to make sure we all have an understanding. Uh, the same format that we've used, uh, this is a, a summary of changes. Uh, at the top part of the page, you have compensation beginning with our certificated employees. 3% raise for certificated employees is right at $12 million. Um, a 3% raise for our support employees is approximately $3.1 million. Uh, that's our $15.1 million. We do have uh, modest decreases or savings in uh, the certificated insurance uh, based upon the basic life premium as well as the certificated pension, uh, the TCRS employer contribution rate, there's a slight decrease. Uh, we also, as I mentioned, take into consideration vacancy and turnover. And so the net number for compensation under this scenario without a step increase uh, would be 11.4 million. Uh, the middle part of the page, required additions other, this is basically unchanged from what you've seen uh, except for the property tax refund, MDHA tax increment, that $2.7 million increase, uh, which I believe takes our total uh, tax increment amount that would be in our budget that would be a cost or an expense to the school district to approximately $11.2 million. Uh, again, the, or the Metro Government Oracle R12 conversion, the existing pre-K program half a year, and then uh, the charter school increase of $8.9 million. All of those are the same except for that property tax refund. So we've got $16.8 million in required additions. Adding that to the $11.4 million above, uh, we're at right at the $28.2 million uh, in additional funding that was recommended by the mayor in his um, budget proposal to the Metro Council. I would also suggest that in addition to or to supplement this document, um, we've heard at the last two listening sessions that Dr. Battle hosted a, a lot of 
families, a lot of um, educators talking about our narrative and having more control of the narrative and making sure people see our school system is full of people. And the document that you all had originally that was a, in graphic form, if it's possible to have this by Thursday, that would be great, because that also outlines more clearly for those who may be visual learners, you know, that this is all we can have, all we can get based on the funding that they're offering right now. So I'm not sure who I'm making that request of. Dr. Severe, if you wouldn't mind maybe looping back with me, but I think this could be very powerful in uh, developing the narrative. So, because of course we have council members being reached out to now and some of them just don't understand when we talk about the inflationary costs or uh, the, you know, just exactly how much a, a step increase costs. They, I just think this could be beneficial. And so I'll look back to communications to Rob Johnson, and you're you're wanting that based upon the 28.2 million that the mayor recommended for us. I think that would be my request of you know from my colleagues if you all are okay with that. I think this would help to tell the story. I think this puts into better context what we would what our limits would be if we're limited to 28.2 million, and then of course the community wrapping their heads around the MDHA TIF um, and understanding how. We as a school system are helping to pay for some of these incentives. I just think it just could be very powerful. Other questions, thoughts, concerns? Yes, ma'am. There's a um, perhaps a misunderstanding. I know that our teachers have worked very hard uh, at um, writing council members to let them know how desperately we need uh, to have this budget funded. And uh, one council member wrote back that um, there may be teachers were writing to the wrong people. Uh, there may be that, that their, their energy should be talking to the board members because this council member believes that there are three people, three highest paid administrators making $1.8 million. I've, I've spent some time looking at the budget to see where that information could, uh, where the council member could, could have gleaned that, that information. I can't find it. Is, it. Would you respond to that allegation? I'll look to Dr. Majors, but I don't know of, of any case where that would be accurate. $1.8 million. Um, but uh, I mean, there is there is a sense I think uh, with the council that our salaries are too high, considering what the government, what the mayor makes, and several of our chiefs make more money than the mayor. Um, I, I asked today and checked about Shelby County. Shelby County has. Uh, 106,000 students. Uh, their uh, director's pay is 291. Their average teacher pay is 56,400, and their average uh, salary of their principals is 107. Now Davidson has 80,000 uh, as opposed to 106,000, um, and our teacher average is um, 2,000 less at uh, 54.9, and the principal salary is 107 as opposed to 109. So I, I think when we have thought about salaries in the past, we have looked at nationwide uh, in terms of our director's salary. and. Um, but maybe we're out of whack with what Metro is paying. So I, I, I want us to, to consider that as we, as we think about these things and so that we can um, give a good rational answer to those members who think that we are, uh, that our salaries are too high. And I know that some of that is because we're, we're paying some members over the pay scale that we uh, that we adhere to or we used to adhere to. So, um, yeah, I, I, I was thinking maybe that was, you know, selling back. I, I just can't figure out how we got there, how, how we got to 1.8 million, but uh, maybe I can, 
uh, contact that council member and you could request um, yeah. some specificity on that. Yes. Be helpful. Thank you. Go right ahead. I have asked him. Um, so I'll let you know when I find out that answer. Uh, thus far, the answer is not specific. So it's uh, a very, so far it's a general number because um, I too have tried to add a bunch of numbers together to try to get to that 1.8 number and that's not, math is not working out. It's about so a million dollars too high. Do not million. have an answer, but so you know, Jill, and of course anybody else knows, um, I will of course inform you when I get to that, get to the well of information. Well, he won't meet with me, so maybe he'll meet with someone someone else. I've tried three times, but good luck with that. That would, that would be an average of 655000 each. And we yes. don't have anyone making that. If we do, I want that job. <coughs> Go ahead, Ms. Frog. So I just kind of want to reiterate the concerns I keep raising. Um, the flip side of the state legislature, because uh, I was up there at least twice a week during the voucher discussions, uh, when you went into uh, legislator's office and if funding came up, first thing they asked was, does your director still have a driver? And there is a sense that we are not being good stewards of the funding that we have. Um, and not only hear that from state legislators, but also from council members. And so, you know, it's... I am in full support of providing these raises for our employees, and I know that we do need more funding. I know that is largely um, a state issue uh, because we are chronically underfunded. But um, I think we have to do our part to clean up the budget. And so I suggested last time that we might work with all of you. Again, we're under a time crunch um, to get something in front of council before Thursday. but. No matter what happens, I would like to see us go through the budget very thoroughly and see if there are contracts, consultants um, that we can eliminate, if we can get these salaries back in line where they need to be. Um, one of the contracts I've heard about a lot is Edgenuity, which is the parents brought up tonight. And so I think there are some things that we can do to cut. It certainly won't be enough you know, to, to address our, our chronic um, underfunding problem, but, but I do think we, we owe that. Uh, we owe that to uh, the district and to our funding body to make sure we've done everything within our power to minimize cost uh, as much as possible. That's all. Ms. Fearing. I don't know how much money we would save if whatever it is, a 3%, a 6%, a 10% that we are uh, eventually able to give our teachers but if we only give these raises to folks who make under over 100, I'm sorry, under $150,000, how much money would that save us? I'm not gonna have that off the top of right. my head. I'll All look right. to, I to Dr. Majors and see if you have it. Um, there's not very many positions that earn over that number, so. Uh, I wouldn't think it would be much in the grand scheme of things, but we can calculate that. Yes, that'd be helpful. Thank you. About 50000 with that. Go ahead, Ms. Elrod. All right. To uh, Amy's point, um, Fred, you had said that you were going to be looking through those contracts. Mm -hmm. Do you have an update for us on that? Um, I had an opportunity to look at those contracts, and David had tried his best to uh, minimi minimize the Excel sheet, and it was terribly hard to scrub these contracts. And going back and echoing what Amy said, and I think we've raised this issue, I think, for the past, what, two to three board me uh, meetings to have all of you to come and help us do that. So that way we can be able to identify and be able to be able to make a decision on do we really need this contract? Is it really touching our cats? Is it something that we can do so we can help um, with raises for our teachers. So it's been extremely hard to do that because everything is kind of all embedded, so it's kind of hard to really read it. So um, again, I'm just, we've asked, you know, can that happen? Is it hard to do? We have all of you to look at that, look at our contracts, our consultants, and things like that, because I really do believe that we can cut, we have to show council that we, that we care enough and we are trying to clean up our house, and I've said this before, um, 
that we're trying to make our cuts because it looks like we're going to go back and present the same information and we haven't done anything to show them that, you know, we are trying to be good stewards and um, cutting some things to help, you know, with the, with the problem we're having to reach the, the raises for our teachers. So what is your, what, what is your feedback to that? What are, what are your thoughts? Sure, and we've contacted Alloview, and Alloview is a, a, a budget platform, and so they're, they are not themselves, they're not going to know which con contracts of ours are effective or not. You know, that's something that the district is going to have to evaluate. And that's what we're trying to do through our priority-based budgeting process. Uh, of course, we just started using All of You this year for the budget, for the budgeting for both the school budgets as well as the district budget. And so we haven't gone through a full year yet of using the All of You product and then going through the fiscal year since the fiscal year hasn't started yet. Um, they, you know, they're agreeable to come and, and talk regarding uh, their product and the, the budget platform that, that we have. And there may be some additional modules that we haven't purchased yet uh, that might be helpful in that regard. Uh, but since we just started using the product, um, you know, it's something that's new to everyone. And we're happy to, to ask all of you to come and, and, and make some kind of presentation uh, regarding that, regarding what their product will do or, or won't do. But what they've indicated is <clears throat> that um, it's really the, the, the school district and the budget owners and the department heads to establish what those metrics are as far as whether a contract is effective or, or it's not, um, because they're just not going to know all the details of all of the contracts that we have. Uh, but we can have them. We can have them come. One thing that I do want to mention is, um, as regarding the current year budget, if you remember, uh, last year we received an additional seven million dollars, but we had twenty-two million dollars in additional fixed costs, which required us to cut fifteen million dollars uh, from the current year budget. It was actually from the prior year budget to make the current year budget balance, and a lot of that was looking very closely and specifically at contracts, and we cut. Uh, in excess, I think it was in excess of $3.3 .3 million from the contracted services lines, as well as we cut um, about three quarters of a million dollars from travel. Uh, you remember we cut 111.5 positions. Uh, we um, uh, basically stopped the implementation of the middle school STEAM program. So we went through a lot of cuts just to make the current year budget balance. That was that $15 million that we had to reduce. Uh, so we have gone through pretty closely uh, with our, our budget team, uh, with the budget owners that have those contracts to, to see where we can make reductions. Not, that they're, not to say that there couldn't be further reductions that could be made, but uh, we have attempted to do that and, and had to do that as part of uh, last year's budget process. So for this year, are we cutting anything out of this budget, the one that we presented on April, in April? Are we cutting anything out at all? Uh, we are. If you look at the, the bottom part of that page uh, where it says proposed changes, uh, we have 11 non-school-based positions that were initially proposed uh, on March 5th to be cut, so that's a million dollars. Uh, we also had additional reductions uh, in various line items throughout the budget of almost $600,000. So we've got about $1.6 million that we've already identified as cuts or reductions um, throughout the budget that could be used if this, if the 28.2 million were the amount that we were to receive that could be used for some purpose, whether it be textbooks or social emotional learning. So we did, we do and did have some, some reductions included in the proposal that was made back on March 5th. But since then, there hasn't been any other change. So once we present on Thursday and and that's, that, that is true, council members, not just this particular council member, but council members are having concerns that we're not cutting, we're not doing any, any, anything on our part to come in the middle. And so I'm just afraid when we come and the only thing we're cutting is 1.6 million, it's just, they're gonna laugh. I, I don't know what else, I mean, we're just not, what else can we do? Because this is not gonna be good enough. I know we're like two days away, but I mean, we probably should have been doing this and I thought maybe, after April, we, we would be doing this, you know, the team come back together and have a conversation, tough conversation about where we're going to cut, what, what really, what do we not really need because it's not really going to, I mean, it's just, we got to do something. 
So I'm just afraid that we're just not going to get what we want because we're not coming, we're not going to council and being very serious about this. So. Well, and as and my response, one of, part of my response back would be that we, we cut $15 million for this year. And so we've, we've scraped things down pretty close as far as we can. Not that you can always make more cuts, but that would be, you know, up to uh, the district to identify. So we really didn't do anything with contracts at all. We just kept everything in the budget for the contracts. Well, we cut $3.3 in contracts from last year's budget for You're this right. year's. Um, and then some of this 600000 that's at various line items throughout the budget, some of that would be reductions in contracts as well. Uh, but I wouldn't know specifically what all those were. Um, I'm sorry, one second, Mr. Pinkston. So a couple different things. Uh, thank you for all of these. And I do think this is an instant, instance where the school board dropped the ball. We were supposed to either ask to reconvene because clearly the department heads have said this is, you know, we've cut as much as we can cut and the school board asked for this Excel sheet. And even though it's hard to read, we don't want the community to see that as, as our excuse. Um, so I think it's incumbent upon us if anyone wants to ask that be added to an agenda or if they want to ask for a retreat, I think that's perfectly, perfectly reasonable. And we can um, have an open meeting and really discuss the Excel sheet, see if there are any contracts that anyone would like to recommend that we pull or that we do a deeper dive into. But I don't think, I think we've asked the department heads to, to, to do, you know, to develop the budget, and now I think we need to take it upon ourselves to take the next step. And secondly, I, I think we've done our, well, we've continued to do ourselves a dis disservice by offering these sound bites that suggest that if we um, make this cut or that, that we'll be able to offer more than the barely 3% raise that we're offering. I would like to to offer this perspective that we maybe consider just talking about the fact that we are substantially underfunded and that we just ask council to work with us and that, yes, if that includes them looking at the central office sheets that uh, Mr. North developed that outline exactly who makes what and how and what's spent in each category, I think we would, again, be changing the narrative so that people see that um, not only are we trying to be good stewards of the funding, but we don't have much funding to work with. I think I would much rather the community see that we're not able to really support pre-K the way we should, that we're not able to support textbook implementation the way that we should, we're not able to recruit math and science teachers the way we should, we're not able to um, fully implement social emotional learning support. So I would just ask that we bear, be, be a bit more intentional with what we say and how we discuss these things and then we as a school board, you know, do a better job of doing our job. And if that calls for us having more meetings or discussing more in depth what we're Wanting, what we're asking for specifically, I think, again, that's reasonable. Mr. Pinkston. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm going to speak first as a taxpayer and then second as a school board member for whatever remaining time I have left on the board. As a taxpayer, I'm tired of hearing about contracts. If you, if the, the two or three of you all who have been so focused on contracts have something to bring forward, do it already. Um, and. The books are open. Uh, you know, go if, if the spread, spreadsheet doesn't work, go sit in the conference room and go through it, and uh, and uh, propose what you want to propose. Now, as a school board member, not a taxpayer, but as a school board member, um, you've got my vote. I'll pledge my vote right now. If you can come forward uh, with proposed cancellations or cuts of contracts that the administration does not object to, you will have my vote. And uh, at the next board meeting, uh, I would strongly suggest that you bring forward the contracts that you want to do away with, and then I would furthermore uh, ask the administration to, to be prepared to either defend those contracts or accept uh, the, the elimination of those contracts. But, you know, you guys have been carrying on for a year, um, uh, and uh, it, all it's done is destroy investor confidence, and by investor confidence, I mean the mayor, the council, and others, so it does not surprise me one bit that we've got council members who are concerned because all they've heard for a year is about so-called problems. So bring some solutions, and you got my vote if the administration agrees to it. Right here. Okay, um, let's, let's, let's go back a little bit. Um, when I want to discuss um, contracts and concerns, that is a major concern. So I have always echoed and have said it loud and proud that we do need to cut contracts. Unfortunately, because of the way our system is, you cannot d differentiate what's where and how things are so embedded. And it is very hard to look at that. So my confidence was to see if once April left, from the mayor's office, that the team will come back together and find ways to cut 
We have asked, if, we have talked about, um, Alabama, we have talked about getting this, um, this system in place so we can do that. Um, so um, I will continue as long as I'm on the school board to continue to fight for these teachers. And if it means cutting more contracts, that's what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna continue to do that. Bring the list. So once we can have a company, and or we can be able to have an organization or a company to come in and um, give us more of an item, because we should have a system in place. We shouldn't have a, uh, an Excel sheet to try to explain what this is and how this all comes together and what it does and what it doesn't do. That's, that's incompetence on, on, on our system. So it is what it is. And I'm gonna continue to do it as long as I'm on this board. So and 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 Point of order, please, gonna, point of order. We're gonna get a list. All right. Uh, we're gonna get a list, I'm still talking. Oh, excuse me, Ms. Bush, if you don't mind, if you have a specific request of the administration if you would like for them to pull together a list, if you would ask, Ms. Bush, if you I'm would, uh, if you would like floor. to ask them to the bring all of you fine, I'm floor. just asking that at the end of this, you make a specific floor. request, a and specific I'm making ask. a comment, just like I said. It doesn't matter what you guys try to do. You cannot combat me because I'm going to still make my point. Okay, I have the floor. So I in made the meantime, remarks, that's all I ask. I'm sorry. I said I made, my, made my remarks. I just asked that you end with an ask for our administration. Okay, again, I have the floor. You do. Okay. I don't need any more interruptions. No problem. Okay. Until we are able to show our city and our constituents and our council that we're doing our part, I'm going to continue to ask the questions. And I'm going to continue to get ask for the request to get the information so that we can be able to move forward with the contracts and with anything else in central office. We're still top heavy with salaries there. So there's a lot of work to be done. So that's what the goal is. We have to send a message that we're doing our part and we're cleaning up our own house. So that's the message I wanna send. And I'm gonna always send that message until we can be able to show this city and our constituents that we're doing our part. Thank you. Any other questions? Ms. Mary? And then Ms. Rogue. I, I've got, I found some discrepancies today and um, maybe you can answer them right now or maybe you and I can talk over the phone uh, sometime this week. But on page six under administration, we, there are uh, categories that give the total. And on page six under administration, uh, there were 142 positions last year. Uh, with the idea of increasing that by five um, to 147. Let me give you a second. Are you on page six of document number nine that the board approved on April 9th? Yes. Okay. Under administration, so, what's this total? Correct, so that shows a total of five additional positions uh, which would be the, um, it would be the three positions in HR, the three posi the, t the two positions in HR for R12. I have a list of them and I just have a different um, sum than, than, the, uh, than the sheet you passed out a while ago. And, uh, Perhaps I'm missing something, so I just wanted to, for you to sit down with me and, sure. and talk Happy about to. it. But if for five additional positions in administration, which we're, we've also increased their budget by 2.6 million. In leadership and learning, we've increased the number of positions by 32.5, which is 56 point, point uh, I don't have the points, 56 million in leadership and learning, an additional 56 million. And, it's, and that's on page 20. On page 21, attendance and social workers, we increased the number by, looks like 22, uh, and that looks like an increase of 2.7 million. Uh, human resources on page two, uh, increase of three at the cost of 1.1 million. Transportation on page 23, uh, we increased by one, but transportation was a, uh, an increase of 3.9 million, and that makes sense to me. 
operation, we lost one employee, uh, and uh, but an additional cost of 2.1 million. Those make more sense to me than these others. So perhaps, sure. uh, you know, if you'd let me know a good time this week that you and I could either sit down or talk over the phone to work out these discrepancies uh, in my head. Sure, and if you look on page two, uh, page two, document number two, outlines all position changes throughout the budget. And you can see that a number of those in leadership and learning are the uh, pre-K programs, uh, pre-K program positions, and pre-K classrooms that are currently funded by the federal pre-K expansion grant that we are bringing over to the operating budget mid-year. That's a, that's a large number of those. That's 25.5 uh, positions just for the existing pre-K program. <clears throat> Excuse me. But all of the positions, both positions reduced and positions added, are on page two, where you can look uh, pretty easily to see what those positions are and, and in what areas they are. Uh, so that, that may be a, a, a better, an easier place if we're looking at positions to see which positions are being added and which positions are being reduced. Some positions are being moved from one area to another, and those should be delineated over in uh, the far right column, column I, for the, in the remarks that the position is being moved from one place to another. But the, the net addition and net reduction of positions would be on page two. Uh, and, and so the number of new positions that we are requesting this year is what? Total it's number? 54.5. Okay, I've got 62 from what I just delineated from looking at the, sub, at, the, at the totals in each of these areas. So that's where the discrepancy is. So if we could, you know, we don't have to... Um, if you look on page 28, uh, which is the, the grand total, um, the grand total additional positions is 54.5, uh, which matches the additional positions on page two of document number two, as well as on page one, the summary, the additional 54.5. But I'm happy to, happy to sit down with you and, and look through those individually if you'd like. Thank you, I appreciate it. So I wanted to respond to Will's comments, but Will has left, and I find it irritating that he's throwing out these comments but doesn't want to actually hear a response from other board members. But let me tell, let me talk about the issues that got us here. These are not imaginary issues, and I have gone through these in great detail. We have a missing $1.5 million that we spent on performance matters. Nobody tra can track where that money went, neither the district nor the company. And that is water under the bridge at this point, but performance matters is gone, not because we were proactive. Performance matters is gone because it got covered heavily in the news. And so those kinds of things are causing the public to lose uh, trust in us. Um, we had a seven-fold increase in unauthorized purchasing over a one-year period. And the reason I've become so interested in Aliview is um, Aliview is able to track those kinds of things. So we can set limits on, you know, amount spent on certain kinds of contracts, on unauthorized purchasing. We, you know, anything that we want to look at, Aliview can track and give us an alert as a board um, as to when we go over that amount. And so I agree, I understand that Aliview is not gonna have, um, you know, they're not gonna be able to provide feedback on the merits of certain contracts and that kind of thing. I understand that um, this is the first year, although I'd heard different things, so I was a little confused, but I understand we don't have a baseline yet, so hopefully we're establishing that this year. But I think in order for the board to build trust among ourselves and also for the public to build trust in us, um, I think it would be good to have an independent source uh, that just comes and provides information and we can tailor what that looks like. That might be a good thing to do at a retreat, uh, but we tailor what we're interested in tracking and the areas that keep coming up for me are HR, um, you know, paying off the salary scale, those kinds of things. That's something we can fix. Um, certain kinds of contracts, and again, I don't, I can't, I don't have the expertise to evaluate. So I think that's the problem when you say, "Well, just throw out, throw out some contracts to cut." I, I don't know what we need in the district. I, I feel like I need some sort of third party input to know what is worth spending money on because I certainly wouldn't have caught the performance matters issues. I, I, the news has to catch these things, and you know, things like the. the 
the um, unauthorized purchasing. I mean, that's not even something that was on my radar. So I, I would just like to see us build that in the future. I don't know what we can do this year. Um, I can, I can bring up the contracts that people keep bringing to my attention. I, I maybe I can do that by the next meeting. Um, and some of them, we I think we've already cut, but but that that's why I think it's a problem. It's not. It's, these are not. You know, we're not just sort of randomly talking about the contracts. They they are issues that have come up on the news that employees are bringing to our attention, that schools are bringing to our attention. Those are the things that have disturbed me the past year. So. All right. Thank you. Um, I don't disagree that we need to um, show that we're good stewards and build better faith of not only within city council but within taxpayers because that's who city council hears from our taxpayers in the community. Um, I think it's really important for us as a board and as supporters of the board and of the budget in general that we are really clear with our um, wording that we do not say that this is fully funding MMPS. There's been a tremendous amount of confusion of the number that we requested, including that 10%, was a fully fund number, and it's extremely important for us to clarify not only within ourselves and supporters and also city council, but anybody needs to understand that the fully fund number is frankly so large that we don't have it, and that that was a uh, more adequate funding number is the better way maybe to put that than fully fund. So I think it's important for us to have before Thursday just a general understanding of that. Um, but I, I would like to say that um, we do need to be better stewards of our dollars. I appreciate us looking through those contracts from last year. I understand that there's probably going to be some outliers here or there. And whatever we need to do to try to flag those, I am glad that as a board we did recognize that that was an issue, as Ms. Frog is talking about, that we had more approvals, and so we've now increased the approval that we have to vote on as trying to have a stopgap there. However, if we're going to say as a board that we're going to go through and do all of these things and go through our contracts and make suggestions, I would like that to have been done before now. Um, so we had more of a proactive conversation than just this is still a problem and we don't have a solution for it. So um, if we're going to go through it, I support that. Um, I'm a little irritated it's not been done as it said it was going to be done by someone else, but I'm glad that we are going to do that. We'll do one more round and then we'll move on. I'm sorry, did you have something else to say? Yeah. <coughs> okay. um, and just so I can reiterate, um, it is extremely hard to, and you probably can agree, those contracts are hard to read and it's hard to really relate to what it does and how all the pieces come together. So when that stuff is reviewed, it is all over a place where you have to figure out all the missing and moving parts in it. So I thought the team was gonna come back together and have that kind of conversation on more cuts. Um, so um, I do move, moving forward, we definitely have to have something in place that we can be able to get the information we need and it not be so hard to get it and be so hard to um, understand what it does and what, you know, what if we need it, you know, that kind of thing. So just wanted to make sure I reiterated that. Thank you, Chris. All right, did you have any news? Mrs. Spearing, any other questions or comments? No, I just, to piggyback off a lot of my colleagues, I think that a retreat would be the perfect place to have this conversation because then we can do a deep dive into it. I think it might help if we assigned department names to the various contracts as to, you know, what department uses this and why, um, you know, things like that that will identify um, contracts that perhaps really aren't necessary. Uh, Mrs. Frog, did you have any other questions? All right, so uh, it seems that we're all in agreement that we need a retreat. I'll go ahead and just make the request. Um, I'll, I guess, email Dr. Gentry, let her know. I know she's out of town with um, ill family, but let her know that we would like to have a retreat to discuss contracts finally uh, and hopefully for, you know, maybe not the last time, but have a, a deep dive discussion. If I could just ask, are there any specific requests so that we can put this to this, the, the tension to rest in, in, in a way? Maybe we should send that to Dr. Spear. Um, sure. So I guess be thinking about that. 
uh, we would probably need to move still very quickly because the council will be voting on the budget soon uh, after we make our presentation. So if I could ask you to just send any questions or suggestions for this retreat, even include dates when you might not be available to Dr. Severe within the next maybe week, I think that's a reasonable ask. Would you, would someone please reach out to Alaview as well to find out when Alaview could be here to uh, go over the budget with us? Dr. Severe, would you mind uh, adding that to the, the list? Reach out to Alaview. Any other questions, suggestions, or thoughts before we move on? All right, thank you, Mr. Henson. All right, well, uh, we'll, begin, well, we'll end with any announcements. Mrs. Bush? Uh, I have no, I don't have any. Mrs. Elrod? All right. Everybody join the Overton train as usual. So uh, Overton, of course, is full of vibrant students and wonderful staff, and they have had an incredible influx of the kind of schools and the amount of schools that they have had um, acceptances from for their seniors. And so in celebration of that, they have a big banner that is now, uh, there's even a very nice stand for this banner, and it's on Franklin Road. So if you live in the area, please go back um, as District 2. We should be so proud of Overton and thankful for not only their existence, but the whole community um, within our district. And so I'm really proud of that banner and I'm glad it's out there. So be sure to drive by if you live around the area. Yes, thank you. Uh, on Thursday, May the 16th, 2019, the Nashville Public Library invites all of us to the 2019 Battle of the Books. Uh, which will um, consist of a literary quiz among 30 Metro Nashville public schools, uh, middle schools. So uh, for more information, you can contact Battle of the Books 2019. And uh, I'd like to say congratulations to the Blue Ribbon Teacher Award recipients, uh, Libby Target from Goodlettsville Middle School, Nikki Roan from Belshire, uh, elementary school, Kiana Nagelis, Old Center, Rebecca Hughes, Tom Joy, Stella White, Tom Joy, and Tia Tate, Old Center. Congratulations. So my colleague was copying on my notes over here. So I wanted to also say congratulations <laughs> to the, all the teachers of the year and especially to um, Laura Binion, who is a rock star teacher at McGavick High School. I wanted to say congratulations to all the teachers of the year who were um, honored on Tuesday, uh, April the 30th. Um, the Donaldson Hermitage Chamber of Commerce held their annual Education Day banquet uh, last Thursday, and that's always a great event. I sponsored the Academy at Opry Mills. Um, yesterday, we had the um, groundbreaking for the new Donaldson Library, and uh, it was it was a wonderful event. And then I'll um, just reiterate and ask my colleagues to join me on Thursday at 4:30 at Metro Council, so we can have a, you know a conversation you know around our budget needs. Mrs. Brogue. I'm just going to continue with the trend here and honor the Blue Ribbon teachers in my area and just to add a little more detail, our Blue Ribbon teachers are um, doing outstanding work in one of three areas, student growth, instructional excellence, or teacher leadership. Uh, the, the Blue Ribbon teachers in my district are Brinley Loiselle at Gower, Hannah Strickland at Charlotte Park Elementary, and Jesse Fallon and Minor Moore at Westmead Elementary. And I also have an announcement from Hillwood, if I can pull that up very quickly. Um, the Hillwood Baccalaureate service will be held May 19th at 2 o'clock at Bell Mead United Methodist Church. U.S. Representative Jim Cooper will address the graduates at the baccalaureate. And the graduation service will take place on Tuesday, May 21st at 6 p.m. at Lipscomb University. Um, I will also be in attendance uh, for the graduation ceremony for Big Picture High School this coming Saturday. Day, May 18th at 1.30 p.m. at Mount Zion Baptist Church. And that, those are my announcements. Thank you, colleagues, and congratulations to all of the Blue Ribbon teachers. I have some from a little bit of everywhere. Cameron, Pearl Cone, Megs, um, Hume Fogg, MLK, Lead, Rosebank, 
uh, Cora Howe, uh, they are just, if you're not familiar with it, please visit the MNPS website and just search Blue Ribbon Teachers, uh, and just congratulations to you all. It is graduation season. If you would like to be reminded of why we do this work, please take some time over the next week and a half to visit one of these graduations. You will witness some excited families, some exhausted students, and uh, just a community ready to support students. So. Uh, Ms. Frog. There being no further business, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thanks. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.